Hi, I'm Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer. And in this video, I'm going to show you my top five reasons that your express entry application gets rejected. Now, with the draws hopefully restarting in July of this year, it's time now to make sure that you're getting prepared. So when they do start to flow, you're ready to get that ITA and you're ready to quickly put your documents and information together to get your EAPR submitted. So this video, I'm going to go through my top five reasons why express entry applications get rejected. And yes, there may be other ones out there, but these are the ones I've seen and I've been involved with this express entry process for its entirety, way back to January the 1st of 2015 when it was first launched and even before working on some of the working groups for the Canadian Bar Association when express entry was even a thought. So going back all of those years, we're closing in on, well, almost over seven years. And uh, these are the things that I see coming up more than anything else. So number one, let's get to it. Your NOC code is wrong. So the National Occupational Classification System is what the government uses to map your work history. And they want to know exactly which of those NOC codes attributed is, well, is attributed to your work experience. So... If we're looking at the knock codes, where do things fall off the rails? You have to select your primary knock. And if you select the wrong one, well, your application will get rejected just for that reason alone. So your duties need to match up with a substantial number of the main duties in the position profile, that those duties that are listed in the knock profile. And if they do that, then you're going to be in pretty good shape. What's a substantial number? About 75%. And also you have to show that you've performed all of the activities in the lead statement of that NOC position profile for the NOC you've chosen. Make sure you get those right. If you get them wrong, like I said, done deal. It will result in a refusal. All right, next, number two is your reference letters are not perfect. The reference letters that you have maybe are missing some of the essential requirements. And this is where people run into a lot of problems, especially when they have larger companies who have their standard form letters. Well, if those, if those letters do not cover all of the information that an immigration officer needs, you can wave bye-bye to your express entry application. What does that letter need? Well, it has to be an official letter on company letterhead. It needs to have your name. It needs to have the company's contact information, the name, title, and signature of the person supervising you, or a personnel officer that at least can attest that you were the person who did the duties and you actually perform the duties listed on your letter. So official letter, what needs to be included within there? Well, it should indicate your positions while in the company. Not just one, but all the positions that you've held. It also needs to include your job title, duties and responsibilities, dates worked for the company, the number of hours worked per week, and the annual salary and benefits. And believe me, if you get any of those things wrong, it opens up the door for an officer who's maybe having a bad day to say, mm, not good enough, bye-bye. All right, number three. Number three on our list is proof of funds. And just like the reference letters, IRCC expects you to prove the settlement funds that you have available in the proper format. What is that? And trust me, this can be difficult because not all banks, you can imagine an employer, an institutional employer, who doesn't want to divert from their regular reference letter and the template they use. Well, you can imagine the banks. Banks in other countries could care less what immigration wants. They have their standard form that they issue letters and um, often it doesn't comply. So you have to be very, very careful and do the very best you can to include everything in your letters that are possible and that's requested by IRCC. So what is it? Once again, it needs to be printed on that letterhead of the bank. It needs to include your name, your contact, the contact information of um, the financial institution, your account numbers, the date each account was opened, and the current balance of each account. And one of the interesting things with this is that they often, well, they do ask for the average balance over the past six months, which can really trip people up. But the reality is many, many banks don't do that. They don't provide it. Well, there are some workarounds and I get into some of those in my Express Entry course that I offer, but there are things that you can do to remove the, the, the problematic elements of the bank not including that average six month balance. All right, number four on our list of reasons that your express entry application can get rejected is simply 
not including the correct documents. Now, people might think, this is stupid. Why would you include that as a number four? Well, I'm going back at all the reasons people's applications are rejected. And well, maybe they were missing a police clearance certificate. They didn't realize they needed one from Singapore as well as India. Or maybe the educational credential assessments that they have, um, well, maybe they put the wrong number in. Or in some cases, I list ECAs and language assessments as essential documents when I'm teaching my students in my Express Entry course, even though they're not specifically asked by IRCC. So I tell people, include your ECAs, include your IELTS exam or your CELPIP results. Why? Because it's within the right of immigration to ask for them if you haven't provided them. And I had an experience, multiple experiences actually, where people were required to upload, say, a language test result because maybe immigration couldn't find the results within the information that um, that IELTS or the CELPIP organization was sending them. They couldn't find it, so they ask you to upload a copy of it. Well, guess what happens? I've had people upload and then forget to take that second step, which I also cover in my course, that you need to do to officially upload the document and send it to IRCC. And I had someone get their application rejected because they didn't include that. So including all the necessary documents seems just like a given, but that's one of the reasons people get their applications rejected. And I'll toss in one other thing. And that other thing is proper translations of documents. And you have to do that right as well. So number five, the final, final one, is not understanding the statutory questions and answering them properly. Well, what are the statutory questions? Have you ever been refused a visa to Canada or any other country? Have you ever been refused admission to Canada or another country? Have you ever claimed refugee status? Have you ever um, had a criminal record? Have you ever you know, had any medical condition, that, that um, a serious medical, medical condition? So all of those things can lead to huge problems if you answer them incorrectly. <sighs> What's a classic example? Maybe you got a visitor visa refused to a different country, not even Canada. Maybe say the US or the UK or Australia, New Zealand. Well, why is that a big deal? All four of those countries are on information sharing um, agreements with Canada where they can look back and see exactly what's happened with your immigration history in those countries. And guess what happens if you did not disclose it? Five-year bar for misrepresentation. And once again, I see this happen so, so many times. What is the consequence? Well, in the worst case scenario, there's a finding of misrepresentation and you're barred from ever coming to Canada for five years. In probably the best case scenario, they send a procedural fairness letter to you which gives you then the opportunity to contact Holthy Immigration Law, my firm, reach out to one of our lawyers to figure out how to deal with this error that you committed. Sometimes we can fix it, sometimes we can't. But when it comes to not answering the statutory questions properly, often it's just a matter of misunderstanding. You don't exactly understand what they're asking. Well, IRCC can be pretty cruel, and if you don't do it right, that's definitely number five on my top five reasons express entry applications are rejected. So in closing, why is all of this important? Why am I telling you? Well, because over and over again, we get people booking consoles with us after the fact because they've made a mistake. And in many cases, there's nothing that we can do to fix it. And you can imagine people who've been waiting years and years to get that invitation to apply, especially now, because come July, when they start, hopefully, the rounds of invitations again for you outlanders, those federal skilled worker applicants who've been waiting for years, the consequence of getting it wrong can be astronomical. Maybe the CRS score, those rounds of invitations goes up and it never comes back down to the level that you were at. You never get an ITA. So maybe they return your application because you forgot your Singapore police clearance. But in the end, it never you never get a chance to go get another ITA because the scores never come down to that level. Maybe you had a birthday. You lose five points, right? Or maybe 10, depending upon your age. So all of those things are factors you just can't ignore. And the whole purpose of doing all of this is to help you avoid those common pitfalls before they happen. Proactivity, that's what we focus on. All right, 
So there's my top five. I hope that was a benefit to you. I made a few references to my Express Entry course, which is launching June 1st. It's going to open up. So make sure you click on the link below. Join us. And at the end of June, we're going to be having our four-hour-long masterclass with yours truly, where you can ask me anything in a live Q&A format devoted only to those who subscribe. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Take care, and we'll see you, well, in the express entry, wonderful world that's hopefully coming in July. Take care.